Hello and welcome to Pocono for another cloudy day. Second cloudy race in a row for the Imron 300. The 12th race of the season. Returning from a hiatus. Command to fire the engines there. Returning, as I said, returning from a hiatus. Sent a couple weeks away from the series. Verizon NASCAR Cup Series. And now we return for the 12th race to finish off to get towards the end of this season. Not that many races left. Currently, Kevin Harvick in the points lead over, I believe, Clint Boyer and Eric Almirola, as well as others. So we'll see how this one goes. So we're going to look at your starting lineup. Daniel Suarez qualifies on pole with Alex Bowman in second. Stenhouse will be third, Larson fourth. Kligerman 5th and Busher 6th, Truex 7th and Harvick 8th, Reagan 9th and Almirola 10th, Jones 11th, Keselowski 12th, Elliott 13th, Castle 14th, Byron 15th, Johnson 16th, DiBenedetto 17th, Hamlin will be 18th, 19th is Ryan Blaney, and 20th will be Clint Boyer in the 14th. So 25 laps today for Pocono. This is its second. This is, well, Pocono hasn't exactly been some of the best racing, but we have seen some good races recently. It spent a long time off the schedule from, I believe, around season four until season six. Might have been earlier that it left the schedule. And it returned the last, last season and has been put up some decent races since. So as we prepare for green, base car pulls off into the restart zone. Green flag, we are racing at Pocono for the Ibron 300. Everybody already fanning out into turn one. As we round off turn number three, that would be something you would consider a clean start at Pocono. Suarez and Stenhouse trade the lead a couple times. It looks like Suarez will lead that lap. Yes, just barely. Only a couple hundredths between him and Stenhouse at the line. Down into turn... Whoa! It's Truex sideways in turn one. What a save. Arvik looked like he was getting pushed into Truex. Truex manages to save it. Everybody running two and three wide mostly in the midfield, but the only part of the track that seems to be fairly clean racing without any contact is this front group. Stenhouse trying to chase Suarez back down, running slightly lower, which helped him in the corner. He's right on his bumper. If he, if he can maybe move Suarez going into three, didn't work. Truex running a little bit lower by about half a lane, not going to work. Although he is there, but he isn't going to get to the inside of Stenhouse. He's right on him, though. Everybody's starting to fan out again down the front stretch. On to lap three, Suarez continuing the lead. Stenhouse looks low. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to the inside of Suarez for the race lead, and he will clear him off of turn one. Down we go towards turn two, tunnel turn. Truex looking maybe for third, but he's not close enough. Harvick's going to try to get... Or not se third, but second. But Harvick is going to try to get third from Truex. And it looks like he might be able to do it unless Truex can fight back on that outside. I don't think he's going to be able to, though. As they enter turn three, here comes Larson for fourth. 
Harvick up into third. Larson looking like he might be able to hold on to fourth, and he will. Truex back down to fifth. Suarez trying to get back past Stenhouse. Good battle for the race lead so far. Been a pretty good race here today at Pocono. Suarez looks inside. Will get the nose under there. It is one, two, three for all of the Fords. And the next car is a Chevy. And there are currently no Toyotas in the top five now as Elliott has moved up into that fifth position. Larson looking on the outside of Harvick. Harvick looking on the inside of Suarez. Harvick going to go with his teammates. Stenhouse losing positions up high. Suarez back to the lead. But Harvick looks low with help from Elliott. Mostly single file in the midfield now. Elliott on the bumper of Harvick. Almost turned him going into the corner. Whoa, Elliot sideways off the bumper of Kligerman. Good save by both of them. They almost ended up going down pit road because of that. Harvick to the race lead. Leads his first lap of the day. Points leader. And contact! Keslowski around in the back. Looked like Blaney was involved as well as, as uh, Castle. Caution is out. As we're going to race back. First caution of the day. Kligerman looking inside on Elliot. For the race lead. Harvick looked like he might have lost some time. Here they go into turn number two. De Benedetto almost made it three wide. Tur tunnel turn is not the place you want to make a three wide pass. As they go down the, f down the back stretch. Suarez back to the inside of Klingerman for the race lead. It looks like he's going to be able to hold on to it as he is clear and has no challenge. They might even go three wide for second. Down the front stretch. Suarez will lead over, I believe, De Benedetto. Yes, De Benedetto will be the second place car. And the first caution of the day comes out after Castle, Blaney, and Keslowski got together. All of them with damage. There might have been more involved. So top five after that caution will be Suarez, De Benedetto, Almirola, Klingerman, and Byron. So as they head down towards turn one, Keslowski and Blaney are working together. Blaney goes a little low and then tries to cut back up, isn't clear, gets into Keslowski. Castle, just an innocent bystander, gets involved, and it looked like both of these guys... No, they didn't quite hit the inside wall. Both of them got it straightened out, but just a little bit of damage on those cars. Not what they wanted, looking... Both of these guys were not in the best situation of points, although Castle might have been in the top five or six in points trying to gain some ground not what he wanted after the past couple of races i believe he dnf'd so we will get back to you as we might have pit stops i'm not sure we'll see how that one goes so yes indeed there will be pit stops under this caution everybody gonna come in suarez will lead them down in front of de benedetto and as they pull into their stalls, who will win the race off of Hit Road? Everybody scrambling to get some get their stops done. Suarez in his stall. Everybody else. Looks like Suarez took fuel only. A lot of guys took two tires, but Suarez wants that track position. Takes fuel only. As everybody else is getting... A lot of guys got four tires. It looked like most of them did get four tires. As everybody else comes out of pit road. Kozlowski getting some repairs. And Daniel Suarez takes a gamble and takes fuel only. Might have been a mistake. You never know. We're only seven laps into this race, although the tires do get used up quite quickly, so we'll see if Suarez made a mistake by trying to stay out, or at least, or not stay out, but take fuel only, because everybody else has four fresh tires, and that is everybody. Suarez was the only one to take fuel only. Some of these guys might have gotten two tires, I'm not sure on that one, but we will see how that one goes. So, preparing for green flag... Daniel Suarez leads him down, Matt DiBenedetto second, Almirola third, Byron fourth, and he will jump Castle, or not Castle, 
Klingerman. Byron jumps Klingerman in the pits and moves up into fifth. A couple people got passed in the pits, so we will be back with green in just a moment. So as we prepare for green flag, then Ilsora still leads. No retirements. Kozlowski will also stay on the lead lap, although he does have a bit of damage. So, pace car will peel off as we go into the restart zone. And we are green once more at Pocono on lap 10 of 25. Truex with a big block on Harvick. Almirola looking for second. It looks like Suarez will maintain the first position. Nobody tried to challenge him as De Benedetto was getting swamped by Suarez's teammate Almirola. But Almirola might not even be able to hold on to that position. Good run by De Benedetto on the outside. Will De Benedetto try to make a move? He will. To the inside entering tunnel turn. Suarez trying to hold him off, but he will not be able to. Matt DiBenedetto, winless on this season, will take the race lead. And here they go into turn three. Kligerman trying to move Amarola. Doesn't work. Amarola still holds on to second quite strongly. But Matt DiBenedetto will be the man with the race lead, and Suarez drops back to fourth. As mostly everybody's single file, Suarez is trying to get desperate and make moves isn't going to work. Klingerman to the inside of Almirola with a late move into turn one, and Klingerman will get back into second. A lot of action at the front of the field, although it is single file down the straightaways most of the time, there is quite a bit of action. Although De Benedetto seems quite fast, they might have made some adjustments on that car on pit road, and it looks like they are helping because DiBenedetto has put a bit of a gap on these guys. Klingerman might not be very quick. Suarez to the inside of his teammate Almirola for third. That 41 car is fast. Gains a couple more positions. Might try to get Klingerman for just laughs. Can he get him down the front stretch? Suarez is in front of Klingerman. And clears him by himself on the front stretch. Suarez, Suarez didn't even take tires, and yet he is still able to get in front of Klingerman. Klingerman on his quarter got into him a little bit. Truex is on his bumper. Suarez up into second, solid move. But De Benedetto is loving to see this in his mirror and is pulling away. Has almost half a second gap right now. And might be getting an even bigger gap as Truex goes to the inside for second. De Benedetto making a bunch of adjustments on his car, I guess, and that helped him tremendously. He is flying right now. Setting some quick laps. Boyer with an aggressive block on, on Johnson. Going into turn one to try and make the move for second. He will get into second. Keselowski seems a little bit off the pace because of his damage. Johnson in, trying to get back to second. If he can, he's on the inside of Boyer. That gap between these two and Benedetto just continues to grow, although... It looks like Suarez is dropping back all these guys that seem to be a little faster. Are pulling through the field. Johnson with a huge gap to second already. What a run for the 48 down the front stretch. Clear of all those other guys who are fighting with each other. Johnson gained half a second on De Benedetto that lap. Benedetto and Johnson pulling some adjustments on their cars, and they are wildly fast, way ahead of the rest of the field. Everybody else is almost a second back, if not more, and Johnson has caught the leader. Most of these guys that seem to have the faster cars after pit stops are breaking away from the rest of the field. 
this race seems to be pretty lenient on setups and how your car handles. So it looks like De Benedetto and Johnson are going to be the main two that are going to go for the lead. This race seems to have calmed down a lot, calmed down a lot compared to how it was in the early stages before that caution around lap seven. And you can see that playing out as two cars are gaining so much time on the rest of the field. They are over a second faster. Or second ahead of them, not faster, but ahead of them. Looking at the lap times, Johnson... Johnson... These guys behind are running almost... Are running over half a second slower a lap than, the re than these guys that are leading right now. Just, just because of the fact that these two up front have way better set up cars and the rest of the field is battling so much, they are running so much faster. Half a second faster a lap than the guys behind. It makes you wonder, does Johnson... Johnson hasn't really been that close to De Benedetto's bumper. Can he pass the 95? That is the question, because Johnson may have caught De Benedetto, but is that only because of the draft? Because Johnson may have a quick, quick car, but is that only assisted because he's in the draft of De Benedetto? Because... De Benedetto might be faster than Johnson, but Johnson is only able to keep up because of the draft. And as you can see, De Benedetto pulled a bit of a gap. Dibby pulled a bit of a gap on the front stretch, gained about a tenth on Johnson, as they're still fighting further back. Johnson had a really slow lap that time. These tires seem to just get eaten up because these guys are losing multiple tenths of lap pace every couple of laps that's how much these tires get worn down as you can see suarez and his gamble to stay on old rubber didn't help because these tires just eat themselves away so quickly and i see some tire tracks on the inside there i'm gonna have a look at what happened because i think hamlin might have had a run-in with somebody but no caution. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. So let's see what happened here. Um, it looks like Busher gets hooked by Hamlin up to the top. Contact there. They're all trying to save it. Hamlin slides. Busher takes the access road. And Hamlin, still trying to block, ends up spinning. But somehow, no caution for this. They stay green. Everybody trying to save it. That filters out the field big time. So that was some trouble. And I mean, those guys are a lot slower. Running multiple seconds, almost. Running about a second and a half off every lap. So, hold on a minute. Down the front stretch. De Benedetto is still running about the same laps as Johnson, but Johnson just can't find a way around. The entire field is stacking up back there. All these guys are in a pack, which might not end well. And it looks like some people might have actually pit. Unless there was more carnage. Yup, pit stops for Daniel Suarez and others. Going down pit road, so these guys might not be able to make it to the end on gas. Suarez definitely can't. His gamble to stay on only to stay on old rubber and take f a splash only did not work out for him. But the question is, the if these guys can make it, the rest of the field might be able to, since these guys took four tires, but Suarez definitely couldn't. Because he took a splash instead of filling the tank all the way up. 
The rest of the field is pretty stacked up back there, so we might have a caution. But, it, the, but it'll have to happen soon, because we are at six to go now. So if we get the caution... After we hit the five to go mark, we will not go green again. This is quite the battle going on for third right now. These guys are going two and three wide a lot. And it's quite scary. But it doesn't look like these guys are going to end up causing a crash. Unless Truex is looking a little weird on Boyer. So we will not have that caution, and Boyer will dive down pit road. White, five laps to go for the leaders, and the leaders are down pit road too! Neither of the guys out front could make it to the end. De Benedetto and Johnson are out of gas. And De Benedetto gets into Hamlin, and these guys are hitting each other on pit road. A lot of these guys can't, don't have... The chance to pit or anything, so or they might not have enough to make it to the end. But that's a question we're going to have to ask later with five to go. Truex inherits the lead, but I'm roll it to his inside. The question is, the leaders, will these guys be able to make adjustments and or try to pull a fuel strategy and catch the leaders? It looks like a lot of them are pitting. Cl Whoa, Clearman and Byron got together. And here they come for pit stops. Truex and Cass are the only two still out on track. And Castle is going for the pass on Truex. Can he get the lead? No, he will not be able to. Although he is still looking just a little bit. But he will not be able to make the pass. Pit stops for all of those guys. Castle looks low again, has a bit of a run down the back stretch, but he's still going to have to stick behind, so these guys might not be able to make it, but did they save fuel or something? Do they have enough to make the end? Castle is dropping back, I think Castle's out of gas! Castle is out of gas. There is no audio to that car. Castle is out and has to coast into pit road. You can see him losing speed. Will he make it to his stall? I think he will. There is Chase Elliott on pit road. So Castle makes it to his stall, and we'll be able to fill up. So who inherits the lead? Jimmy Johnson will take the lead away from Truex. And is Elliot a lead lap car? He is not, I do not think. Elliot is not a lead lap car. So Johnson will inherit the lead, but he is by himself. Second place will be Eric Jones, and third is Clint Boyer. What happened to Benedetto? He led most of this race, and he's back in 14th right now. Catastrophe for the 95. The battle right now is going on midfield. Suarez is actually back up into the top spots. Not in the top, might actually be able to sc sc or scrap out a top five, and he will. Suarez is in the top five right now. He is running fourth, and Elliot is a lap car. The nine is a lap car, and it will not be a factor in this race. Suarez is in fourth, but he's being caught by this pack that is behind him right now. Johnson is way out by himself and might be able to get this race on fuel strategy. Will he be able to make it to the end or will they catch him? They are long, 
Those guys behind are a long way behind them, and they've got lap traffic to contend with. Jimmy Johnson has not had the best of seasons recently. Hasn't really he's he's been up and down, had some race wins, had some DNFs. White flag for Jimmy Johnson, who ran second in most of this race. Jones and Boyer dealing with lap traffic right now. They cannot get past him. Is Jones out of gas? He was really slow coming out of turn one. He might be out of fuel. And Suarez is catching... Suarez might be able to salvage even more positions, but the story right now, Jimmy Johnson up in the lead. Harvick, the points leader, not having a good day that he wanted, running in 10th. Off turn number three. He's going to do it. On fuel strategy, Jimmy Johnson wins at Pocono for his first of the season, I believe, and Suarez will barely grab third from... Boyer, after almost getting dumped by Byron, coming off turn number three, Suarez recovers after take after having a bit of struggles after taking fuel only. So, top ten and the full finishing order. So, Jimmy Johnson with the victory, Eric Jones in second, Daniel Suarez in third, Clint Boyer fourth, 5th will be Byron, 6th Klingerman, 7th Truex, 8th Almirola, 9th will be Reagan, 10th Harvick, and outside the top 10, 11th will be Stenhouse, 12th will be De Benedetto, who led mo over half of this race, <coughs> 13th will be Keselowski, 14th will be Castle, 15th Larson, 16th Blaney, 17th Bowman, 18th will be Busher, 19th Elliott, and rounding out the field in 20th will be Hamlin, who's probably going to be pretty upset after there was no caution for that one. That wreck probably should have been a caution because there was a lot of contact and stuff going on. So anyways, Jimmy Johnson, your race winner at Pocono. And next race, race 13, will be at Phoenix for the Baskin Robbins 350. Looking at the point standings, Clint Boyer, with his strong fourth place finish, will end up in the points lead by 14 points over Kevin Harvick. In third will be Klingerman. Klingerman was towards the bottom of the standings for a lot of this season. Pulling what Hamlin pulled in the early seasons, and is now in third in the standings, 42 back on the leader. Jimmy Johnson, with his race win, his first win on the season, will be will be in fourth, 43 back, and rounding out the top five in points will be Eric Almirola, who is now 59 back. And looking at all of our race winners so far, we've got. Three people with two wins. Three people with two wins. Parker Klingerman, with a late season recovery, has the most top fives as well, and and a lot of top tens. With two wins, and what a what a interesting way for this season to start coming to a close. Klingerman spent a lot of the first half of this season in the bottom three in points. And is now in running third. Other driver with two wins is Eric Almirola. And third in two wins is... Will be... Chase Elliott. So, looking at the point standings again... Bottom three will be Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Kyle Larson, and Chris Busher, all at the bottom of the standings. Other Look at a couple other positions. Bowman still stuck around that 10th place area. Suarez and Byron falling out in points, which are 77 back and 117 back, respectively. 
Catch you next time for race 13, which will be at Phoenix. And we will do I will probably do that one later today. So, see you then. Have a good one.